Howdy again everyone, I was always a big fan of one particular launch lens for Canon's EOS R mirrorless cameras, the handy RF 35mm f1.8 IS STM Macro. That's a popular lens and good value for money, so I'm very pleased to see Canon following it up with a new 24mm version, the RF 24mm f1.8 IS STM Macro. It's still a full frame camera lens, still image stabilised, still fairly small and light, still with that nice 1 to 2 times ratio macro ability, and still with that lovely f1.8 maximum aperture for getting out of focus backgrounds and faster shutter speeds in dark situations. Awesome! Its price is a bit higher than that of its older 35mm brother, being $600 or about £700 here in the UK. Surely that UK price should be lower, but still, at least in the US, that's pretty good value for the complete package you're getting here. Well, if the image quality is any good, that is. And that wider 24mm focal length is a little more exciting, and certainly more difficult for manufacturers to design, so I'm not surprised to find that it's a bit more costly. I'd like to thank Canon UK for loaning me a copy of this lens for a week for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The lens has virtually the same body as its older 35mm brother, they are like Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Its body is mostly made of plastic, apart from the metal lens mount which does not have a weather sealing gasket though. It's relatively small and light, weighing only 270 grams. What's nice is that it has some useful external controls, auto or manual focus mode, image stabilisation on and off, the cool customisable control ring at the front, I like having control over all these things from the lens instead of the camera like on some other systems. The focus ring turns averagely smoothly and it's electronically coupled to the focus motor, responding quite well in manual focus mode. However, the lens does exhibit quite some focus breathing here, which can be bothersome to video makers. The STM autofocus motor is fast and efficient, as you can see here, shooting in stills mode. It makes a very quiet whirring noise as it goes, but when shooting in video mode it slows down and goes virtually silent. Let's take a look at the lens's image stabilisation, which Canon rate as offering you a huge 5 stops of assistance. and. Well, it's doing a great job here actually, although I'm not quite sure if it's 5 stops of help overall, still a wonderful feature for both stills and video work. The lens's filter thread size is 52mm wide, and it does not come with a hood. Overall, just like its 35mm brother, the lens works great, all its electronics and build quality are just fine. On to image quality then, I'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, my Canon EOS R5 with its 45 megapixel sensor in-camera corrections are turned on. In the middle of the image we see very good sharpness and contrast, although it will get just a touch sharper again if you stop it down to f2.8. Well, let's look over in the corners, things are definitely not so rosy there, with low contrast and somewhat hazy sharpness, although admittedly a clear enough image is still just about being captured. Stop down to f2.8 for a huge improvement in brightness and contrast, but the image is still a little soft, F4 is a lot sharper though, F5.6 and F8 are as sharp as the lens gets in its image corners, good but not fantastic. At F11, diffraction begins to cause a little softness, and at F16, the image is really deteriorating. Overall, well, I mostly did like the image quality coming out of this lens when shooting on full frame, but I do wish those corners were sharper. Well, today is a red letter day, because this is the first Canon RF lens I'm going to be testing on an APS-C camera as well as full frame. Let's check out some test results on a Canon EOS R7, with its smaller, but wildly more demanding, 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f1.8, in the middle of the image, sharpness is very good, but contrast is just okay. Corner image quality is a little softer, but actually still not too bad, I guess we're taking advantage of the APS-C sweet spot effect here. Stop down to f2.8 for noticeably more sharpness and contrast in those corners, and a much better contrast back in the middle. At f4, sharpness and contrast are absolutely perfect in the middle, although the corner image quality looks about the same as before. The image quality stays about the same down to f8, where a little extra softness begins to emerge due to the effects of diffraction. f11 or darker will look soft because of it. 
Overall, well, considering the rather brutal demands of this camera's cropped 32.5 megapixel sensor, the lens's performance is acceptable on an R7, although corner image quality is never great. However, if you were to use it on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, like the R10, you'll be fairly satisfied, I think. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get rid of those in-camera corrections by shooting in RAW and take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera. There's lots of it, if truth be told, just look for itself. That vignetting sticks around at f2.8. At f4, the corners get a little brighter, but that really is as bright as they get, so not a good show here. As I mentioned already, this lens has a wonderful 1 to 2 times macro ability, so while it's not a true macro lens, still, you are getting fantastically close to your subject here, down to 14 centimeters. To test that close-up image quality, here's my favorite collectible coin, which commemorates the liberation of the Falkland Islands in 1982. At f1.8, close-up image quality is just good. Stop down to f2.8 for it to get very sharp, and at f4, we see perfect sharpness. The lens stays this sharp until about f8. However, at f11, f16, and particularly f22, diffraction causes softness, which is simply unavoidable for any camera lens. Overall, a good macro performance here. Now, let's see how the lens performs against bright light. Nice. There's just one little point of flaring to be seen here, and aside from that, all is cleanness and contrast. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f1.8, it's a bit high. Just look at that smearing. I guessed as much from the earlier test pictures, frankly. Stop down to f2.8 and it's reduced, and at f4, it's gone. Let's zoom out and look for sun stars now. Only at f11 do they strongly begin to emerge. At f16 and f22 they do become nice and strong as you can see, although you might not want to shoot at that dark of an aperture due to diffraction softening. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. Very, very nice. It looks beautifully smooth here in virtually every situation imaginable when you get out of focus backgrounds. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.8, we see some pink and green color fringing emerging on bokeh highlights. Stop down to f2.8, and it's mostly gone. Overall, well, the RF 24mm f1.8 IS SDM macro is a seriously handy, but not perfect, lens. It's highly versatile, with its macro ability and bright aperture, but also easy to use with its helpful image stabilization. On a full-frame camera, it captures a dramatically wide angle, which will be lots of fun to shoot with. On an APS-C camera, it'll draw you in a bit more to your subject. My biggest disappointment here was with its corner image quality. I wanted a bit more corner sharpness, and that's what's going to rob this lens of my highest recommendation, but only just because it's still a fantastic piece of kit that loads of users will have a lot of fun with. It still definitely comes recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, blah 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 Patreon, blah 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 exclusive bonus content, blah 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 in the description below. And thank you to all who have been supporting this channel so far, you really are making a huge difference.